What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be talking about pretty much what has become the age-old question, Barry, anybody, Reddit, Discord, who do I choose as my first Transcendence Hero, who do I choose as my second, my third, my fourth, I mean not really fifth, because I mean if you got to ask that question, it might be a little questionable, but who do we build, when do we build them, and a lot of, thing has, a lot of things have changed since Sealand comes out. Uh, certain heroes definitely take higher priority than others if you want to make progress. We have to really consider all the end game game modes right now. We got Tower of Dream, we have Sea Land, and we have Void Vortex. Those are the big ones. You could say we have Realms Gate and Arc 2, but that's not really as much gameplay. But Void Arc a little bit when it comes to the Void Arc bosses. We will address that, but today I really want to go over who to pick as your first two Transcendence heroes because I think this is definitely... A solid answer now there's no if ands or buts there's pretty much a number one number two you could kind of flip flop them if you want we'll discuss that today what the advantages of going for the number two first instead of the number one first and then flip flopping them and then after that we'll briefly touch on the other heroes where they're useful at but i think this is just really really needed right now because sea land just opened up a whole nother can of worms because there's one faction that is very very easy to complete sea land 25 or rather much easier i should say than other factions so hopefully you guys enjoy this one make sure you guys hit that subscribe button well, let's jump right into it <laughs> So first up, we definitely have to go into and talk about Sword Flash. She is, she is pretty much the undeniable must-build first Transcendence hero. She just solves so many problems, and she is by far one of the most broken heroes in the game. A lot of it coming down to uh, to her sharpness ability here. A lot of it comes down to this, but she also has explosive damage. Number one is the presence of mind. After releasing an active or basic attack, she gets one layer of sharpness. What does that do? Well, guess what? That is a guaranteed dodge. Not only is that, but abilities that like will target you multiple times in the same attack, well, she just dodges all of those in most cases as well. So it is a huge huge buff to survivability and not only that she will then also counter attack the i believe the the hero with the lowest hp i believe received enemy with the lowest hp two times so yeah you're hitting him twice for 1000 percent attack at v4 and has a chance to deal a different additional damage to all enemies it is a very strong ability and the main reason why she just dishes insane amounts of damage is her active ability void crusher hits three attacks in a row is extremely overpowered when she does have impeccable flow because she will hit everybody with her attack it's insane she has a ton of self-healing so she's pretty much a one woman army she can dodge she can counter attack she can heal do insane amounts of damage and she has some couple places where she really 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 shines number one is going to be in the void vortex void vortex she is pretty much the answer all the way up to vanquisher one you run her in a lineup very similar to uh let's get this stupid shenanigans out of here let me show you normally what you would want to be running on a typical lineup here the two keys are going to be queen and sword flash and it just so happens they're two of the best heroes to have as well the other thing you need to run is a drake now the rest of the heroes are pretty much kind of up to you what you want to run for filler heroes rogans are great carries can be good i mean even the the the, the infamous that we've shown you earlier the 10 star balrog but you do have to run her in slot one if that's the case you can run heroes like this to help support your team it's very very much the easiest way to get there the other thing you probably want to be running are some e5 or 10 star ignis copies in here so you want to run something like a suicide one just to give some crowd control immunity the that 100 at nine star is really great at least i think it's at nine star it might be 10 star but this is the type of lineup you want to be running to try to get to vanquisher she is the only answer really because not even ticks can really do it anywhere as easily as her but the big combo is having a void imprinted and as strong as possible drake why because with drake in the lineup 
they are going to be going after the same target that his defense down shadowler ability is that means a hundred percent of their armor damage reduction all damage reduction block and dodge are just completely gone that helps a ton when you're targeting a carry and there's tons of carries in void vortex essentially you want to try to get a kill in round one so that she can then be fed more energy for an active in round two which then lets her cleave the entire team down that's why she is like the go-to she will make a joke out of both uh valiant and even defire vanquisher it does get very difficult you're going to need a much better team lineup and setup but that's why she is so amazing she's also great in tower of dream i don't personally use her that much but i know jesus is here and a lot of other people do use her as the main damage dealer in tower of dream and he is number one so you got to take that for uh into consideration but overall she's also one of the best single target damage dealers in the game up there with ithaqua so in void arc when we are talking about these void arc bosses that are floating out here she is very good at dishing damage out to the void arc bosses if you're not running an ithaqua if you are running ithaqua technically you can run both of them at the same time if you want to but she is just explosive high damage she is the most versatile but there is one thing we need to talk about and that is sealand she has a really rough time in fortress sealand fortress sealand is difficult because you need multiple sherlocks to dove everything permanently it's a headache it really is you only have 15 rounds to win it you're going to be running her with an antlers cane and just hoping your sherlock army can dove everything and have enough damage to kill all the enemies so it does get a little tricky I think people have gotten 25 done, but I don't know if anybody's actually pulled that off just yet with like insane builds. I know, I know this is one of the most difficult ones to beat here. Fortress is like by far one of the most difficult. So do not expect to go very far in Fortress Sealand. That is the one downside. Now that leads me into the other half of this video, and that is the number two hero, which technically you could borderline say could be your number one. And that is Queen. Scarlet Queen crushes it in Abyss Sealand. Abyss Sealand is by far the easiest Sealand to get 25 in. Like, not no contest, just the easiest. It requires two V4 E5 heroes. You could probably not even, you could probably get away without a second V4, but then there's a lot more RNG involved. This Queen is amazing the two artifacts you're going to want for her are going to be an antlers cane an upgraded antlers cane and an upgraded ambi those are her two bread and butter artifacts for going into sealand she's overall like the most versatile hero in the game mainly due to her abilities like royal guard giving all damage dealt to her team she has of course a heal as well and of course her basic and active abilities hit a lot of targets lower the crit of the enemies so you're not taking as much damage coming back and then that royal guard pinging adds a ton of damage to your overall damage cap so she is a very 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 good hero but i think because she gets abyss sealand 25 done easier than any other faction i could see people building her as your first now should you probably not sword flash is still kind of the safest bet but with the addition of sealand queen has by far taken the number two slot in my mind uh the fact that you only need two e5 v4 heroes you need a couple upgraded artifacts and then of course all you need besides that is a couple like nine or ten star ignis just to give the cc immunity to your main heroes the ignis and of course the queen is just ridiculous every other faction you have literally almost a full e5 v4 lineup to complete it this is the thing if you love sealand this might be the better path for you to go but in reality vortex and everything gives you so much power sword flash she is probably still the best number one pick but before we were always saying do we build do we know technically could vesta be near number two because she does insane healing and shields she does she does force sealand okay insane pve damage uh but she lacks the overall versatility She's useful everywhere, but she's not needed everywhere, per se, where Queen and Sword Flash are. Now, Jara is another one. We'll kind of touch base on her. She kind of lost a lot of value in my eyes. She's one of the best strategies if you're looking to use, like, tons of Demon Bells and just completely lock down enemy teams forever, as you've seen a ton on this channel. But she's really not even used in Shadow Sealand. And if you have a Transcendence Hero that's not really doing anything for your Sealand, is it really worth building? 
it, it is for whales. It is for people who have splendid Ruiz, splendid DBs all over the place. She's amazing. But besides that, she's probably the last one you want to build. It's, a, it's competition between her and Vesa. And then I think Asmodel has really run up the ranks to be maybe the number three Transcendence Hero. I mean, Tower Dream, he just does tons and tons of damage. Even the way I run him with like a Demon Bell. He can get Sealand 25 done, but as you guys have seen here on the channel, it's very, very difficult. And we're not even to that point. We're like that much damage away from getting it. But overall, he's a ridiculously high damage dealer. Very strong. But I do have to say, number one on my list, Sword Flash should be your go-to build. Queen, your number two. If, if you're weird like me, I, I might pick Queen first just to see how it goes. After that, I would probably consider Asmodel, Vesa, and then Jara if you're looking at the exact order. But a lot of this comes down to what artifacts you have. Sword Flash and Queen, I would say, were probably the two that require the least amount of artifacts on your account to get things done. Whereas the other three really do so... Yeah, let me know what you guys think. I just wanted to make sure we got that out there because a lot of people have been asking with the new Sealand. Abyss Sealand is just so easy, but I still think Shia is the go-to first build. But she does have competition in Queen. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I'll see you guys next time.